In this video, we'll take a look at how to use Photoshop CC to correct mistakes in your digital artwork. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a painting that I created back in 2012. I painted the horse from imagination, so I didn't get the legs exactly right. They look really strange, and the piece is way too dark overall. It's a flat image, so I can't adjust the layers, but I did fortunately put the texture on a separate layer, so I can turn that off. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and save a copy of this artwork. And then I'm going to go ahead and brighten it up a little bit so that we can see what we're doing by adding an effect for levels. And I'm just going to click the auto button. That'll brighten things up. We won't leave it this way, but it's just going to make it so that we can see those dark areas a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in on the legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the leg out and I'm going to fix the background. Then I'm going to paste it as a layer and transform the leg to get it looking right. So to show you how to do this, you want to select the polygonal lasso tool first. It may be hiding under the regular lasso tool. And then what you want to do is you want to pick the leg that you want to fix or the area of the object that you want to repair. So I'm going to do this leg here. I'm going to hug the edge of it. So I'm going to do a very, very tight selection here, as tight as I can do it, and just get only the part of the leg that I want to fix. Then I'm going to double click to close that shape. And then now I have a selection. I'm going to do Control X to cut and Control Shift V to paste it in place. This will put it back exactly where it was. Now we need to hide that layer and we need to fix the background. So I'm just going to group that layer and name it and then hide it. I'll go to the background layer and I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select that white space. Let's go ahead and refine that edge and we'll change the preview to overlay. Let's shift the edge 100%. Let's go to OK and let's do that one more time. We'll go to refine edge and we'll shift it 100% and we'll click OK. That'll make sure we get that whole white area selected. I'm going to use shift F5 to go ahead and fill that with content aware. And then you can clean up any weird edges using the spot healing brush to just go ahead and paint over those strange looking areas. Like so. And that kind of blends in the background. So now we've fixed the background, we can show that leg again and we can start working on it. So we're going to use the polygonal lasso to go ahead and just cut this leg into pieces at the joints. That way we can bend it naturally. So I'm going to cut it right there at the knee. I'm going to use Control X to cut and Control Shift V to paste in place. Then I'm going to use Free Transform with Control T to go ahead and rotate this. I'm going to move the point of origin up towards the knee. Then I'm going to hover over the corner until I get the little rotate icon and I'm going to rotate the leg. I'm going to cut it there near the foot and rotate it a little bit and try to get it to look more like natural horse legs rather than what I thought horse legs looked like. You can also use the Move tool to move these pieces of the leg around and get it looking the way you want it to. I'm going to repeat this process on the rest of the legs that I don't like. And then let's go ahead and improve the lighting a little bit. I'm going to go to that levels layer and I'm going to just dim it a little bit with the opacity slider so that we're brightening just a little bit enough to be able to see the piece better but not too much. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the gradient tool with a radial gradient to go ahead and add a mask. So I filled the mask first with black, and then I'm using white to go ahead and add a gradient that goes from the sun towards the subjects. That gives a nice lighting effect. You can hit F on your keyboard to evaluate. If you want, you can add a couple more levels layers to brighten things up if you want to. Next, I'm going to select the leg layers, and I'm going to use the smudge tool to just kind of push these layers around to fill in those gaps. So I'm pushing the edge of one layer behind the other layer that's above it, and that gets rid of that gap. I'm going to do that on the rest of the legs. And then if there's any weird seams, we'll go ahead and blend those with Corel Painter. If you're having trouble seeing because it's too dark, you can add another temporary levels layer just to brighten it up. Or you can also add a blank layer and fill that with white and make that a screen blend mode. That also works to brighten things up temporarily. And you can just reduce the opacity like so. Sometimes looking at it brighter helps you see areas that look weird that you wouldn't normally see in darker pieces. So I'll just kind of keep that as a temporary layer and then turn it off when I don't need it. Let's go ahead and save a copy of our artwork at this point because we're going to want to merge our layers together with Control E. Now let's duplicate that flattened copy by doing select all copy and paste and then let's go to image adjustments, shadows and highlights and let's improve the lighting and contrast a little bit. I'm going to increase the midtone contrast and that'll make it look a little more surreal. And then you can reduce the opacity of that layer if you overdo the effect and try to find a nice subtle blend where it's just improving it but not overwhelming it. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and flatten our layers one more time and then we'll move on over to Painter and we'll do a little bit more work on this in Corel Painter. 
So I have this open in Painter, and what I'm doing is I'm just blending away any weird seams where we'd cut those layers, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some more dark on a separate layer, and anywhere else that I wanna add things, I might add it on a separate layer, and then occasionally I might flatten it down and then go ahead and blend and so on. So it's kind of like I started working on this painting again, and I'm just adding to it and adding whatever I wanted to add last time that I guess I was just too lazy to add, and correcting things that I didn't notice before. And that's really the beauty of working with digital art is you can do something and then wait a couple years and look back on it and go, oh, man, those feet are totally messed up or the image looks too flat, it doesn't have enough contrast. And you can fix that without having to repaint the piece from scratch. It's always good to save lots of copies of your artwork. That way you have it saved in stages and you can always go back and fix it later if you need to or make changes like I did here. So I think we have a finished piece. I think it looks a lot better than it did before. Here's a before and after. You can see that the legs are a lot more like realistic horse legs, and I improved a lot of the contrast and just made it look a lot better overall. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll join me every Thursday for a new Photoshop tutorial. And I have lots of other videos throughout the week that you can watch. If you want to get updates, you can subscribe. It's free, of course, by clicking the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.